Hello everyone, welcome to Marion's World again. I'm pleased to be sharing a video of my next flower page, which is the wild rose or a dog rose. And other than that, just to say thanks everyone for watching and all the comments that I've had about my little Scotland travelogue. I'm so pleased you liked it. Anyway, on to the roses and thanks a lot. Well, I'm all set up for my next flower page and it'll be the one next to the honeysuckle so I've learned my lesson and I'm going to have to keep it flat anyway this is the page it's the one I can embroider and so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to do a wild rose I've already planned it out so I wanted to take that sort of a thing so a wild rose, maybe rose hips, but I think I've changed my mind already, and some leaves. And I have cut it out because I wanted to get the, the scale of it right. So I've cut it out and I've just cut out a template for a petal and I've cut them out. So what I'm using is I've got this old piece of cushion cover. Uh, so it's a furnishing fabric, but the colours, the white's really good, the pink I thought was really good for rose petals. So I'm going to do more of a slow stitch than a, than the sort of embroidery I've been doing for the birds. And then I thought maybe I'd do a proper collage. So I found some lace. This is just old vintage lace. I've got collections of all sorts and I've cut little pieces of that out too and I'm going to collage that on top of the petals where the white because they on a wild rose the pink's really near to the edge of the petals so I've got those to put on and the little bits of lace I've cut out some green for the leaves ready to go on and I thought firstly to get this shape on would be to do the stems and so I've got this nice bit of variegated wool and it's a bit too thin for what I want so I'm just doing a finger crochet to thicken the stem up so if you know how to do finger crochet or not you just have to start with a slip knot and then you just keep going in and pulling pulling the piece through and it grows so that's just a finger crochet chain if you start with a big enough loop you don't hardly have to move anything so that's probably enough for what I need I'll just cut that off and if I pull the end through it can't unravel go so now I've got a chain that's big enough for me to couch down for the rose stem oh you must excuse me if I sniff because I've come back from Scotland with a bit of a cold and I thought I was going to have Covid but I haven't because I've done my test it's just a cold but it's making me sniff I'm going to couch down. I've got this brown pearl cotton in my needle and obviously I've got my tangle here to pull things from and all of my embroidery threads. So I think the first thing is just to get started. We've couched down that bit of finger crochet with the brown thread. I was using the brown thread so I could do thorns on my way back down but I've actually just stopped so that I can use the bit of wool that's left over at the top to work my way back down to do the thinner stems and I'm just going to do them with split stitch so I've just marked it out on my bit of fabric on my page with the blue disappearing pen so I'm just going to go Maybe the stitches are about a half an inch. Straight down. I'm going to come up just through the end and split the stitch. 
take another maybe less than half an inch actually but makes a nice smooth line and it's a, a thinner line than stem stitches and it's very economical on your thread apart from being economical it's just a really nice stitch to get a smooth line with so as you can see all I've got on the back are those four little little running stitch pieces but on the front I've got a nice smooth line I'm going to go right up to the bud I've got the rest of the stems in I've done a bit of stem stitch there and transition into split stitch to make the line thinner and I'm just going to start and sew these pieces of leaf on I've got a piece of uh, green from my tango it was already just two strands um, I think there's another one similar in there already and I'm actually just going to running stitch these on but with quite small stitches and because that's in my hand I can just do the stitch in one go I don't have to stab it and like I would if I was in a hoop and if I want to embroider over these afterwards, well I can do, but it's important just to get the design onto the fabric in the first place. And the easiest way to do that is just to running stitch them on. I'll go up and down the main vein. So running stitch up and a running stitch back. Which is quicker than doing back stitch. Well, obviously, when you're holding them in your hand, you really have to be careful not to be pulling. I sort of just know where they need to be, but I did put a line on to help myself. I've put all those leaves on just with the running stitch and instead of finishing off because I had a long length of the green I've whipped up this piece of split stitch so that I can get up to where the first bud is just done a little bit of a leaf with a few stitches <clears throat> and then I'm just going to whip up here it's an easy way of getting from one piece to another if you don't want to fasten off and it adds dimension to your embroidery. I've got a dark pink, just like a teardrop shape. I'm going to put that on there to be a bud. And I think if I just put it on very easily, if very just with a few stitches at first, just I know where I need to go. And I'm just going to do bits of straight stitches that are sort of satin stitch but a bit more loose. And they'll be the calyx and then the, the pink will show as the bud. I'm going to do the same on this side. Just going to take a very loose satin type of a stitch. And that's the end of that thread anyway, so that's a good one. That's a good piece used up out of the tangle. Of course there's always more being added all the time. But I do use them up. I found a few pinks from my tangle. And I'm just using them to put these pink petals on. And I'm just putting them on with a little overcast stitch. And the reason I'm doing it with an overcast rather than a running is with it being a furnishing fabric, it's a little bit fraying. And although I quite like that, I definitely like it on the leaves. I don't want it to fray away. And so I'm mitigating it by overcasting it on with little stitches. It'll just help stop it just totally going. Um, I was lucky that to, to 
to get the perfect colour out of my tangle. It always feels like a little win when I take something out of the tangle instead of getting a new piece. And the petals are all down now and I just want to put this little lace overlay so as a, on a wild rose the petals are white in the middle and they shade to pink and I thought the overlay of the lace would help to make that look like that was what was happening and I'm just going to put it on this is a bit of a silver grey in my needle that's just out of my tangle and I just want to put it on with a few straight stitches to look like the veins of the petal because the rest of it will be kept down by the embroidered stamens so I'm just going to do two or three stitches fanning out from the middle that mean that that's the sort of the veins of the petal and I'm going to skip straight over to the next petal Where's my bits of stuff? There's another one. Like that. Oh, I think that's going to look really pretty. And just, I'm just doing three stitches, I think. Just so that the pink is really just at the edge. And these vein lines are just going down towards the centre on top of the lace. Okay, I'll finish that off and get ready for the stamens. I found this bright yellow in my tangle and it's in, although it looked like it was going to be too bright, it's actually perfect. And I'm just going around and around with random sizes of straight stitches and as long as they all radiate out from the center I don't have to think about it too much because I don't want them all to be the same size but I do want quite a bit of them quite a few sorry and so I find that it's easiest to go around first doing a few and then just keep going around thickening it up rather than trying to get the amount that you want in all on one go. It's much easier to just go up and down or round and round and thicken things up a bit at a time. So that's what I've done. I've already been round once. <clears throat> if I've got a few long ones, I make sure a short one goes in. I'm not pulling it tight. And I'm not going right into the middle either, because I need that to be open for the for the green middle. I think that's just about right. In fact, I'm going to call it a day on that. I found this yellow ochre, and I am just going to go around and put a whole ring of French knots on, in and among the stamens. And so as long as I'm, I'm just doing a two wrap and I'm making sure that the knot is right down at the fabric before I pull it through. And I'm just going to work my way round and then if I find that I want some more I can go around a second time. But at the minute they're just going to go in a bit higgledy piggledy. I'll put one or two further out. But most of them will be in the ring of the stamens. And they're really making a difference. Don't want to go too close into the middle. As long as I just keep the ring going, I can go sort of in and out and zigzag up and down. I think the two wrap French knot is definitely enough for this scale. Right, we'll see what that looks like. I 
feel as if it needs a few more here so I'll just carry on working through. I found this nice apple green, it's the only bit I've got so I'm going to use the lot and I think I just want to build up sort of a central lump of the middle of it where the seed, the, the hip is underneath and actually I'm just going to go around doing crisscrosses that will build the middle up so I'm going to go around like that so there's the first cross now I'll come and do another one and all the time it's going to build that middle up a little bit so even though it's a flat embroidery I should still give it a little bit of dimension. I'm almost finished and then I realised that I actually wanted a bit more of a contrast around the edge of the petals. And so I'm taking this bit of pearl cotton uh, and I am just going to do a, what I'd call a loose blanket stitch around the edge. And when I say loose, I mean I'm not bothered about the size of the stitches. Some can be longer, some can be shorter. I'm not trying to make them all closed up. I want some of the underlying fabric to show through. But I just want that darker colour to be right on the edge. And I also, I'm only taking it down to where the lace begins. And as I come down the side, instead of doing it at a right angle to the petal, as I have up here, I'm sort of still angling the stitches down as if they were the veins on the petal. So that it all, it doesn't look jarring. I think I have one more there, which is almost going along the edge of the petal rather than in onto it. And I think I can go down there and skip along to the next one. It just adds that bit of contrast, which Sometimes you want everything to be all pale and pale and beautiful, but I just felt as if it needed this little bit of darker edge. It is a really nice working in the hand like this. It means your stitches are done in one motion rather than stabbing back and forward when you're in the hoop. But just some things need the hoop and some things can manage without. Well, I've finished the embroidery. I'm really pleased that I put that extra row of blanket stitch around the edge. It's just brought the colour up that tiny bit. But the lace has worked really well. And I really like the frayed edge on the, on the leaves. So... All in all, I'm pleased. I've put it into my book so that I can do the writing, so that I don't get the writing in the wrong place. And I think I'm just going to go with the Latin name and a couple of common names, maybe. I was thinking, could I get on the Shakespeare quote about a rose by any other name would smell as sweet, but it's probably quite a lot to get onto the little page. So I'm just going to write on it, Rosa Canina at the top and then what I'd like to do is going to make that into a nicer font I just make these up as I go along, really. Right, or as a canina. I thought I might just... 
going to go a bit off piece and do it a bit different to where I usually do. I'm going to go wild briar and then here Yeah, I think I'm quite pleased with that. Just make this a bit. And I think that's that page done. There we go. It's sitting quite nicely next to the honeysuckle. Actually, <clears throat> Definitely holding its own against the against this 3D work here. I can't finish the edge off here yet because this one hasn't been bonded together with its partner. So I've got another embroidery type page to do there. Then I can bond them together and finish the edge off. But I'm very pleased that a rose has got into my book. I'm really pleased with how that came out and I actually nearly finished my flower book unbelievably I've only got three more pages to do and then I can put it together I may have to do another outside uh, because it is maybe not going to lie flat because of the blooming honeysuckle and the viola uh, so I'll, I'll think about that but actually there are only three more pages to do uh, so I'll be very carefully deciding on which ones are going to be there and in the meantime the sort of things that I'm on with well I've been doing another spoon since I've come back so I've been enjoying my wood carving my quilt which I have filmed bits and pieces of uh, but uh, one or two people noticed and made comments about uh, having it in Scotland I worked on it a lot and this is the first time I've done this type of a quilt in the city style and I have to say I'm really enjoying doing it. It's something you can just do on your knee. I could have been marking it out and I could have been more accurate with the way that my um, my rows are spaced but in the end it was my it's my practice starter of doing this technique and it's not really bothered me that some of the rows are further apart than others the whole thing just feels so lovely. It's so soft. And it's just a totally different technique than anything I've done before because I'm used to traditional quilting. So that is definitely something that I'll be filming a little bit about in the future. Um, but I've got quite a bit to go on it yet. The other thing that I'm going to be doing is this is one of my projects from before. So I've got this lovely linen and I am about to cut this out and make this coat, uh, which has just been waiting to be done. And the main thing about that, it will, it, I will film uh, me making it, but it will be in, in the stages because I'm intending to hand sew that whole coat and it's going to have embroidery on it. So it, it'll be a long project. It might not be too long, but <laughs> it'll, be a, it'll be a project over a little while as I do the, the embroidery and I saw all the seams and everything. So that's likely to come up. My narrow binding bag, which I'm desperate to be starting, but I'm definitely, definitely either want to finish my flower book or this quilt before I start another thing. And the other thing that I'm desperate to be getting on with are I've got two knitted cardigans to do and they're both fair isle. Actually, I think one's a jumper and one's a cardigan. They're both fair isle, and I really enjoy doing colour work. But particularly, I do a couple of techniques that maybe you won't have seen before. And so 
I'd be really, I really enjoy filming that and showing you how to make your fair eye really, really lovely and not pulled. Because I think some people have issues with their tension. And it may be that the way that I do it may help to mitigate that. As the autumn's coming on, I definitely feel the pull of the knitting needles. And the other thing is, because it's autumn, I'm thinking of Christmas presents already because I make, well, maybe 90% of what I give at Christmas. We don't do huge presents in, in this family and I don't have a huge amount of people to do them for. So mostly people get handmade things and there'll be the odd book that obviously I can't make the books. But uh, other than books, the nearly always people get food presents, handmade things. And so I don't know whether I'll be able to film them because I don't want to give the game away as to what people are getting. But there's definitely room for um, showing some Christmas preparations because I have to start this early or else there's no time to do them. Um, and I've done that since I was a child. Uh, I've always just handmade my Christmas presents. It just carried on into adulthood and then I just never stopped. So I really look forward to making things for people. And so it's that time of year. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please press the like button or the subscribe if you want to carry on seeing it. I love all your comments. Thank you very much for encouraging me onwards. And anybody who's pressing the subscribe or pressing the super thanks or just sending me comments and just being there, uh, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, anyway, thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye from Marion's World. Happy crafting, everyone.